Dr. S, the senior speech today, you say that your critics may be criticizing the wrong thing. Just what did you mean by by critics criticizing things like corporal punishment, long hair, and things like that? What should they criticize, you think? Well, the real issue facing us in our schools today is whether or not young people are going to have a skill to market when they graduate. We know that 80% of our young people are not going on to get a college degree, and yet, most of our high school programs across the nation are college preparatory oriented. We know that we ought to relate the paycheck to the report card, and yet our young people don't have a skill to market, you see, when they get out. Now, people are criticizing us across the board for all sorts of things except what they ought to be, and that is they ought to criticize us because we're not adequately preparing young people for the world of work. Well, Jess, we feel that this has long been needed in our vocational program to invite businesses in to help us with the things that we as educators are not skilled in and would not be qualified to teach. Now, of course, we would object if they were coming in and teaching things that we're qualified to teach, but we think that in a career development center such as they will have at Skyline that this program will be very good. It's no easy job being a school board member in Dallas. It's estimated that each member spends at least 20 hours a week studying what other school boards are doing, making studies of their own, conducting and participating in committee meetings, and meeting with the community. Very seldom are they praised for their work, but often are they criticized. The people who occupy these chairs receive no compensation for their toil. They have all asked themselves why, and the reason most often comes back to see that the boys and girls of Dallas have the best possible education. This seat at one time belonged to Jerry Wheat. He resigned to take a job in Abilene, Texas. So it is now left up to the board to pick his successor. That person, man or woman, must live in the Pleasant Grove, South Dallas area. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Jess Brown. Jay, of course, uh, we've gone into this thing now. I'd like to say, we uh, council has repealed the budget. Uh, they've asked me to, to present another budget and have a public hearing on this new budget on next Thursday night, 7 30. Uh, we've uh, already trimmed the budget that had been approved before, down $104,000. By doing this, we've eliminated 14 of the 18 new employees that were going to be proposed. We've had to hold the four additional firemen because of the reduction in the firemen's hours, work, work hours. From, uh, as you know, we were going to reduce them from 72 to 56. So uh, these were not additional men uh, as far as fire protection, they were just to reduce the working hours of the uh, employees we have. How about figures on the new proposed budget that you've trimmed down? Uh, what sort of tax increase is inherent? Uh, this will require a dollar and fifteen cents. Well, our, our sewer program uh, certainly will be a regional situation, and it will affect not only Garland, but Richardson and Plano, and could possibly even affect the city of McKinney. Have you been in consultation with the North Central Texas Council of Governments on this? Uh, yes, sir, we have, and we have discussed it with them. People of our community seem to be more interested in their own personal activity than in the vital interest of water, sewer, and electrical facilities. The pr improvements covered on this pro pro bond program will not will affect the citizens of Garland in their daily lives and will be the largest single factor in determining the future growth of both residential and industrial development within our city.
I think that this nation must be aware, as the administration is and as I am, that our track record in respect to the health care of children in this nation is not very good. And that's putting it as euphemistically as I can put it. Um, we must develop broader services. Uh, people have looked at Head Start, for instance, and have been so concerned about uh, intelligence quotients and reading scores that they fail to realize that that program is the single largest health delivery system to poor children in this nation. Uh, when you discover that over 37 percent of our full-year children and over 43 percent of our summer children in the Head Start program have an identifiable physical defect, we begin seeing the magnitude of the problem. Now, these children in Head Start uh, typically have something done about these problems, but what we must do is deliver services to children, health services to children, so that they do not develop these uh, diseases and ailments that finally incapacitate them uh, later in life. Sometimes I think the vice president uh, overstates the case. He, he, he is sounding a popular note. But I, one thing I'd like to say along that line, I don't, I don't think there are many people in this country that are uh, the least bit in favor of violence uh, on in the campuses or violence in the streets or violence in the sky. I think we want to stop it all. I think there's been more Republican uh, rhetoric than there has been uh, action in these areas. Uh, the administration didn't do anything until just recently about uh, skyjacking. We've appropriated more money than the administration requested to try to um, stop crime in the streets. You're not going to stop the crime in the streets by uh, laws in Washington.
I'm one of the original planners of the Head Start program. I should begin by saying, in my estimation, in terms of delivering services to uh, our nation's needy children, this has been the most revolutionary and most impressive social action program uh, of, of uh, certainly the last 50 years. After having said that, I think that it would be a mistake to think that Head Start is the answer to, to our problem. Head Start still does not uh, reach the number of children that need that particular kind of service. I would prefer viewing Head Start as the first stage in the development of a total delivery system of children's services. Um, I think that we will move on uh, uh, from Head Start with increments of money. Uh, for instance, I think that the uh, family assistance plan, the daycare money is there. If those were um, grouped with Head Start monies, we would immediately uh, have a much larger base of money to work with and a much larger um, uh, collection of uh, children that we can serve.